Hey guys, what's happening? Here is an interesting project I've been working on for a little while and it's finally ready to share with you. This is the first version. Let me tell you what's going on here. This is the Arduino programmable thermostat. So we have a Nano here, a Nokia 5110 display, a DS3231 real-time clock, a rotary encoder, and a relay. Now the hookups for this stuff is relatively simple. The Nokia 5110 is hooked up via soft SPI using pins 7 through 3. The DS3231 real-time clock is an I2C, so it is hooked up over here to pins A4 and A5. The rotary encoder is hooked up here to pins 8, 9, and 10. 9 and 10 are the um, rotary encoder function, and 8 is the clickable button. The relay is hooked up to A2. So the way it's working now, this thing has two modes, a manual mode where you can just twirl the rotary encoder and change your temperature. And it's only working for heat right now. And then it has a programmable mode where if you're in the main display and you click the button, it will take you to a program mode where you can set a time and a temperature. And when you're done, you click the button again, it takes you back to the main display. And when you reach that time, it will set that temperature. So right now we only have one programmable time. I'm gonna add two, maybe three. So you can change it for different times. And then also further down the road, I'm planning on adding in this HC06 Bluetooth module so you can set it from your phone. But that's it for the setup. Let's take a look at the code, which is a little bit involved. So, you know, you might want to skip over that part if you don't want to listen to me explaining the code and you can download it. You know, of course, the link is down below. Other than that, let's move on. All right, guys, there is a lot going on here, so I'm not going to spend too long on this. We'll be here forever. This is the Arduino programmable thermostat. Here are the libraries we're using, the SPI library. Uh, the real-time clock library, ITC library, and these two libraries for the display. A couple of defines. Uh, the button from the rotary encoder is on pin 8. The relay is on A2. couple setups from the libraries. The display is set up using soft SPI with those pins. And the clock is set up called clock. We have a shitload of variables, a bunch of Boolean variables, some byte variables, uh, one string variable, and some integers. In our setup, we're beginning serial 9600 for debugging. Start the I squared C, start the display. You need to uncomment this block to set your clock the first time or whenever else it needs set. Uh, pin modes 9 and 10 are input. Those are for the rotary encoder. The relay is output. The button is input. We're going to set the button state high so when it's pressed we get a low. We're setting our contrast for 60. You'll have to adjust it for your particular display. And we clear the display. Now let's come down to the main loop here. The first thing it does is get the temperature and then it gets the time and then it checks whether or not you have pressed the button and if you have pressed the button it sets the menu variable to one if not it sets it to zero and then we say if the menu equals one and am done equals one meaning that we haven't finished programming it we go to my menu and we'll get there Otherwise, we go to our main display, which is called page display. Then we have if my mode equals programmed heat, which means it's been programmed, and the hour is greater than or equal to my hour one, and minute is greater than or equal to my minute one, 
then our master temp set goes to the program temp set, else nothing changes. And then here's where we decide whether or not to turn on the furnace. If T set is greater than the temperature in Fahrenheit, turn it on. If not, turn it off. Now here's our page display function. This is the main page you're going to see all the time. We start by clearing the display, setting it up, and then we draw a rounded box starting from 0, 0, 84 pixels wide, 10 pixels high with a 4 pixel radius. We put the cursor in the box, we set our text size, and then we display the time, hour, minute, and seconds. Then we drop down to the next available line and we print out a header for temperature and set. We draw boxes for them. We put the cursor in the first box and in it we display the current temperature in Fahrenheit. We put the cursor in the second box and we display our temperature set. Then we drop down again. We set the display for inverse and we print out the mode we're in, whether manual or programmed, and then we show you everything that's going on. Once that is done, we read the rotary encoder, and if it's been turned clockwise, which means A is zero and B is one, then we increment the temperature. If it's counterclockwise, which means A is one and B is zero, we decrement the temperature. Otherwise, we do nothing, okay? Now back up here, remember we said if the button is pressed and it's not finished being programmed, we go to my menu, and that's up here, oops, I the wrong way, so this is the my menu function, first thing it does is it sets menu to one and am done to one, so we stay on this page, these are for the rotary encoder, we set up the display, all this. We print program menu, and we're dropping down a line. You see that is a print line command. We drop down another line. We print uh, program set one, my hour one, my minute one, and my temp one. So it's initially set at 12 o'clock midnight and 67 degrees, I believe. Then we show you that. Now we use the button again to decide whether or not we're going to set them. So, if the button has been pressed, we wait 100 milliseconds to debounce, and if it has been released, we increase, we increment menu state, and then we use the switch command here. So switch on menu state, case one. So the first time you press it, it's going to put the cursor underneath the hours and print these two little carrots pointing at the hours. Then we do the um, rotary encoder read. If it's clockwise, we increment it. If it's counterclockwise, we decrement it. Then if you click the button again, it puts the cursor under the minutes puts the carrots pointing at it. We do the same thing again. If it's clockwise, we increment the minutes. If it's counterclockwise, we decrement the minutes. Otherwise, we do nothing. And then if we press it again, it puts the cursor under the temperature, prints the carrots under there pointing at the temperature. We do the rotary encoder read. Clockwise, we increment. Counterclockwise, we decrement. And of course, at the end, we display what we've done. And then the final press, case four, sets my mode to program heat, sets menu, and am done to zero. So when it finishes this function, it's going to go to the main page display. And we set menu state back to zero in case we come back here again. And this was just for debugging. All right. So that's it. I know this is a little complicated. So, you know, download the code. The uh, link is down below take a look at it let's go check it out in action alrighty here we go here is the Arduino programmable thermostat in action 
and you can see we have our first rectangular box with the time printed in it. Then we have temp 72, set 67, manual heat. Now if we come over here and we twirl the rotary encoder, 68, 71, we'll jump a couple there, <laughs> 76, and now you can see here that the relay is activated so the furnace is on. And if we come back down below the set temperature, the relay is off. Now if we click the button, that sends us into our program menu. Program 1, you can see the time is set for 12 o'clock. We'll set it for, say, 6 p.m. it is. And we'll make it 6. Six ten p.m. You know, bath time. So we want the temperature to be a little bit warmer, and we'll set it for seventy degrees. Then we click again, and now we're back to the main menu, and you can see we are in the program heat mode. So that's all there is to it. A little more complicated than the usual Arduino stuff, but. Um, when you knock it down to one single step at a time, it's not that hard. So if you enjoyed this, and I hope you did, please give me a thumbs up and share and feel free to comment. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you really should because on the 17th, we are giving away an Arduino Zero to all of our subscribers. Well, not to all of them, to one of our lucky subscribers. And it is available to everybody who is subscribed. All right. See you next time.